this is how I learned how to stop worrying and RTFM. Uh, for the uninitiated, RTFM stands for read the <coughs> manual. <laughs> so, um, who am I? Um, I've been something like a software engineer for about nine years. I've worked for startups that have succeeded and startups that didn't. Um, I have worked at research labs for uh, computational linguistics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity. I've uh, developed and built uh, high performance distributed systems for uh, what Forbes magazine calls the number one most innovative company in the world, and that's not Google. Um, on a little corner of the internet called Quora, um, I've been the most viewed author for dozens of categories ranging from programming languages to systems administration to algorithms and many others. And my answers have been featured on uh, Huffington Post and Forbes. And currently I'm an architect and the technical lead for data services at Elation Media, um, which those of you in the audience who uh, are fans of anime might know is the parent company that owns Crunchyroll. So when I was first starting out nine years ago, um, if you were to tell me that this is what my future holds, I wouldn't have believed you. Um, I didn't see myself as the kind of person who would know the things that I now know or who would be capable of doing the things that, that I've by now done. Um, it was because I had this archetype in mind of a person who, who was capable of these things uh, to whom all of these things came naturally. And because I was already encountering struggles in learning what I did know, I, I must have disqualified myself as that kind of person. So. The turning point in my career uh, came during my internship at the Naval Postgraduate School. The professor that I worked for uh, asked me to do something that was uh, wildly, spectacularly outside my skill set. And I, I seized up. I felt helpless. I, I told him, I, I think you might have hired the wrong person. I, I have no idea how to do that. And I'll never forgive, for, forgive. <laughs> I'll never forget the, the look that he gave me, which was, he had the look of someone who had heard the dumbest thing he had ever heard in his entire life. And he looked back at me and he said, so learn, <laughs> and walked away. <laughs> so <laughs> that moment shattered that disqualification as, as the person who could, who could achieve things. Um, I, I realized that I had no idea where I got this, this confidence in my inability to do things. Um, I, I realized that the, the, the whole of, of human knowledge opened up to me and I, I realized that I was the only thing keeping me back from becoming a subject matter expert in any field that I chose. So um, for a time after that, I had actually called myself uh, Read the Manual Man, whose uh, superpower was reading the manual, RTF <laughs> Um, and uh, it, I, I recognize that same attitude that I had in uh, students in college, and I still do among colleagues um, in the software industry, and I still have it myself um, when I catch myself having it. Um, and and that, this idea that there is some body of knowledge that, that can't be learned somehow, um, that instead it's, it, it's mystically revealed only to this class of elite people who, who are able to hold that knowledge within their brains. Um, and that's not the case. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I took it upon myself, oh, no, excuse me, um, the, the one piece of inane advice um, that this uh, talk uh, can give is, is roughly the following. Um, leave it to, to read the manual man here. If you want to know how to do something, find the manual, read it until you understand it, and then you'll know how to do it. <laughs> um, so, I know that you know this. Um, I knew this when I was starting out. Um, but what is conspicuously absent from this advice is the requirement to be superhuman. So this advice applies regardless of who you are. Um, it, the, the main crippling uh, obstacle to this is, is the delusion that you are someone who is not capable of following device, that advice. So to illustrate this, I, uh, for your benefit, I've asked a lot of my uh, friends and colleagues um, for help, uh, so people who are the, the smartest and most capable software engineers that I have ever met. Um, I asked them questions about their learning experience. Um, these are people who have come from Facebook, Google, Twitter, uh, eBay, Yahoo, Salesforce. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd like to share some of those answers with you. So first of all, let's talk about books like this. Um, teach yourself Java in 24 hours. So I have mixed feelings about these kinds of books. <laughs> um, 
I think that their mere existence does accurately convey that um, learning how to program is a lot more accessible than people give it credit for, that anyone can learn how to program. But it also implies that learning how to program in the long run, um, particularly beyond, of course, what a book like this would teach you, um, should be easy. And the problem with the implication that programming is easy is that if you don't find it easy, that must mean you're stupid. So this one in particular, um, also, if you notice in the top right corner, uh, advertises that it can teach you how to uh, be an Android developer in 24 hours. Now, did any of you know that you could be an Android developer in 24 hours? <laughs> no? <laughs> Good, because you can't. <laughs> right? So, no one <laughs> who has learned how to be a Java developer or an Android developer has learned this way. Maybe they started, but actually there was another slide that in retrospect I shouldn't have taken out. But um, it, uh, that question was, how do you believe, how well do you believe does a book like Teach Yourself Java in 24 Hours uh, prepare you for a junior level software engineering job? They were split 50-50. Uh, none of them said adequately. Uh, half of them said insufficiently, and the other half said not at all. Um, so there are better ways. <laughs> there are no easy answers. Um, so, right, so nobody, nobody learned how to, how to do it this way. Uh, it's not working. Okay, so uh, how easy is it for, I think I went back too far. Here we go. How easy is it for um, top tier engineers to learn how to program? So none of them uh, had an easy time with the whole thing. It, it wasn't a walk in the park to anyone. Nine out of 10, um, there were more than 10 respondents, um, what do you call it, said that, <laughs> characterized it as uh, requiring persistent effort beyond the basics. And 10% of them worked hard to learn every single thing that they learned, even the basics. So nobody acquires this knowledge instantly. It's, it's not a walk in the park. Um, in fact, everyone uh, had at least one topic that took them multiple attempts to learn. Half of them had something that took at least three attempts. And some have uh, you know, encountered topics that are just impenetrable uh, to them thus far. <clears throat> so the next question I asked them was about uh, skill versus talent. So a talent is something you have a natural aptitude for. Uh, whereas a skill is uh, practice, experience. 100% um, of them said there is no substitute for practice. So when people see these, uh, you know, the same archetype that I saw of someone who was just naturally talented and you know, who would excel to, to greatness and beyond, um, it turns out, uh, realistically, talent doesn't actually get you that far. Um, a lot of the respondents for longer form answers had said that talent is useful for jump-starting um, your education, but in the in the long run, um, practice dominates. Um, right, and 10% at the bottom said that attitude can only make up for an experience. So it is a consensus among experts <laughs> that if they can learn how to program, then anyone can. <laughs> um, it, primarily in that it, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't require geniuses. Only one person, I think I know who that is too. I'm gonna get them. <laughs> Screwing up my surveys. Um, <laughs> Right, so that, this is the key takeaway there. So, um, is learning how to program hard? Yes, it, it very much can be. But, um, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I, I skipped a whole section. Um, is this what I think it is? Yes, I'm pressing the button too many times. Just uh, get it closer. There it is. So let's talk about imposter syndrome. <laughs> imposter syndrome is the delusion that you have not earned your place among your peers. Um, it's a very isolating feeling. It feels like you are not qualified to be in their, in their presence. Um, it is very common in uh, academia. It's very common among technical professions, and uh, the software industry is no stranger to it either. So um, of the best software engineers that I have ever met and worked with, 50% of them, more than half of them, worry that their colleagues know more than they actually do. They worry that they don't meet their colleagues' expectations. Three quarters of them, and all these numbers include me, by the way, have pretended to know things <laughs> in conversations with colleagues. More than a third are too embarrassed to ask questions that they think are embarrassing, that are well within their skill sets, and so they flounder quietly. So this is tragic. It, it really is. But uh, the good news is that if you uh, face self-doubt, uh, you are by no means alone. <laughs> you are in very good company. So um, this is the thing that differentiates um, those who have succeeded from, from those who have not, which is, in all cases, uh, regardless of, of talent and difficulties, the people who have succeeded and gone on to become top-tier engineers who can work at any company they want to, 
They just didn't give up. It's a matter of persistence. It's a matter of building skill. Um, I don't know how much more I have this. So <laughs> um, the, the key takeaway is uh, if you are having trouble, if, if uh, learning how to program is not coming easy to you, that does not mean that you are incapable of it because it, does, it didn't come easily to anyone. Even if you're struggling, you're doing no worse than someone who has gone on to be among the best. So that's how they got there. That means you're doing it right. They don't have anything in them either, or you know, some have natural talent that helped them uh, jumpstart their, uh, their education, but there is nothing special to them. There's no special class of people uh, to whom um, programming is possible and others who cannot. You are already the kind of person who is capable of starting and who is capable of succeeding. It's purely a matter of persistence. Um, and yeah, that, that's the main takeaway there is uh, we all have doubts. Um, we will all continue to have doubts. Uh, the next time that you see, feel yourself making harsh conclusions about your capabilities, uh, I encourage you to set aside those worries and just read the manual. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>